The solid design principles are a set of guidelines meant to help improve your code by making it easier to understand, maintain, and extend. Solid is a mnemonic for the five principles, which are the single responsibility principle, the open closed principle, the Liskov substitution principle, the interface segregation principle, and the dependency inversion principle. This video is just meant to be an introduction to these principles, but if you want to see me cover each in more detail and with more examples, let me know in the comments and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss them. We'll start with the first principle, the single responsibility principle. This principle states that a software module should have only one responsibility and therefore only one reason to change. This is probably the simplest principle to understand, but it can be tricky to use. It's just too easy to add a function to a class thinking that it fits in when it doesn't. Let's consider the transform component in Unity to get a better understanding of this principle. Every game object that you create in Unity will have a transform. The single job of this component is to manage the position, rotation, and scale of a game object. So you can expect all of the functions for the transform will have something to do with either the position, rotation, or the scale. A good test to check if a class follows this principle is to write a description of what the class does. If you have to use more than one verb to describe it, you probably need to break it apart. For example, you may have a class that's responsible for dealing damage to enemies, so you may think that it would make sense if it also displays the amount of damage dealt. If we write a description of this class, we could say this class handles dealing damage to enemies and displaying the damage dealt. Both jobs may be related, but should be separated. Think back to the second part of the single responsibility principle. Each class should only have one reason to change. This class would change if we need to change how we deal damage, or if we wanted to change how we display the damage. So instead, we should break it into a damage dealer and a damage display class. The second principle is the open-closed principle, and this one's a little bit more difficult to understand. It says that software modules are open for extension, but closed for modification. This means we're going to need to do some more planning for our code. The first half of the principle says modules should be open for extension, which means we need to design our code in such a way that we can add new functionality. The second half claims that each module should be closed to modification, which means that once a specific piece of code is complete, we shouldn't go back to make changes except to fix bugs. Together, that means that we need to be able to add new functionality without modifying the code that is already complete. One of the best ways to satisfy this principle is by using inheritance. That means we'll need to use tools like interfaces and abstract classes. As an example, let's look at how we could implement weapons in a game. We could create a sword class that stores things like damage, value, and weight of the sword. And we can also add in an attack function that will swing the sword and deal damage. With a design like this, our player will have an instance of the sword class, and when the player attacks, we'll call the attack function on the sword. This would work if the sword is the only weapon we'll ever have, but the open close principle says it should be open for extension. In this case, extension could mean adding new weapons, but since we specified that the player only has a sword, then we'll have to set up a complex system to use any different weapons. If you're making a game where the player can pick up all sorts of different weapons, this can quickly become a mess, so we need to rethink our weapons to open them up to extension. The first step is to create a base weapon class or interface that all the different weapons will use. This class will have all of the weapon-specific information and functionality, like damage, range, and the attack function. Now in the player class, instead of having an instance of a sword, we can have an instance of a weapon. By doing this, we can add in any weapon for the player to use as long as it inherits from the weapon class. Following this principle makes it easier to add new functionality later in development, but it usually takes some iteration to get it right. The next principle is the Liskov substitution principle, which usually goes hand in hand with the open closed principle. The Liskov substitution principle says that any derived class should be a suitable substitute for the parent class. This means that you should be able to replace the parent class with any derived class without breaking anything or changing the behavior of the base class in unexpected ways. In our example, we have the weapon class as the base class, 
it stores information about the weapon and has an attack function. If we make a weapon that derives from this class, it must work as a substitute for the base class. For example, we have our sword class that's derived from weapon, but imagine you want the sword to have a combo attack where the damage of each consecutive hit increases. To do this, you may be tempted to increase the damage value of the sword each time the attack function is called. Then at the end of the combo, you can reset it to a default value. It may not seem like this would be a problem, but what if later you wanted to show the player how much damage a weapon does? We'd need a system that reads the damage value from the weapon class and displays it. But if we're in the middle of a combo with our sword, the damage value won't be consistent. In the base class, we expect the damage to be a constant, but then in a derived class, we're changing it. This principle is meant to prevent situations like this, where a subclass extends the base class in a way that's inconsistent with the expected behavior of the base class. The interface segregation principle states that a client shouldn't be forced to implement an interface that it doesn't use. This is simpler than it sounds. It basically means that a class shouldn't implement an interface if that interface includes something that the class doesn't need. In the example we've been using, we have our base weapon class that can tell us things about the weapon like how much it weighs, how much damage it does, and how much it's worth. But what if we want to add in items that aren't weapons? Imagine we have a sell function that accepts a weapon as the input so players can sell their weapons. Maybe we want the player to be able to pick up a spoon and sell that too. We can use the weapon class to create a spoon since it would let us assign a value and then pass it into the sell function but then we also have to include damage and durability and an attack function for our spoon. It may hurt to get hit with a spoon, but it isn't usually the weapon of choice, and you may not want your players using a spoon as a weapon. There's a few ways you could fix this, but they're all just different ways of breaking apart the weapon class to make it more reusable. I think it's safe to say that any item is going to have a value and a weight, so we can create an item interface with these variables. Now any item can implement this interface, and instead of passing a weapon into the cell function, we can pass in an item. If we add this interface to both our sword and spoon, we can sell both, but we don't have to worry about the spoon being used as a weapon anymore. If you think that there's going to be some items that the player won't be able to sell, like items required for a quest, you can break this up even more and create a sellable interface that you only put on items that can be sold. The last of the solid principles is the dependency inversion principle. This principle states that high-level modules shouldn't depend on low-level modules. Both should be dependent on abstractions. In addition, abstractions shouldn't depend on details. Details should depend on abstractions. This is just a complicated way to say that everything should depend on abstractions rather than concrete modules. This principle is closely tied to the open-close principle and the Liskov substitution principle. In most cases, if you implement those principles, then you've already implemented the dependency inversion principle. I think a player script is a great way to think about this principle because it's common to see people combine movement code and input handling within one script. The first issue with this approach is that it doesn't obey the single responsibility principle. Right now, our class is responsible for handling input and for moving the player. Instead, let's create an input handler script and a character mover script. Now we satisfy the single responsibility principle, but if we want to move our character with player input, either the input handler will be dependent on the character mover, or the character mover will be dependent on the input handler. The problem with this is that it prevents us from reusing the scripts. If we think about this more carefully, then we can reuse the scripts for multiple players or even for AI. So instead of reading inputs and directly using them to move the character, we can store them in a move input object. By doing this, we open up the opportunity to create artificial inputs and pass them to the move function instead. This is really useful for AI because you can have your AI code generate one of these input objects rather than creating it directly from player input. By doing this, we still haven't entirely removed the dependency that these classes share. So the last thing we will want to do is create another class that will have an instance of our input handler, the character mover, and the input object. 
Now we can use our input handler to set the input object, then pass it directly into the character mover. Now neither of these two scripts are dependent on each other anymore, instead they're dependent on the common interface between them. It takes practice to start using them effectively, but if you can apply all of these principles in your code, then it will make it much easier for you to finish your games. And like I mentioned earlier, if you want me to cover each principle in more detail, let me know in the comments. For now, if you want to learn more, check out the links in the description. Also, be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.